So welcome back to the channel. I'm Sunny and this is Someone Else's Cloud. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about my experience and passing the AZ500 Microsoft Azure Security Technology Exam. <laughs> Okay, so I'm back on YouTube's and if you saw my last video, I was in the process of moving. So I've moved now and I'm slowly settling in still. And as you can see, I have been uh, building out my little studio here. Um, and it's probably gonna change over time because um, I haven't really locked in on, on how I want it yet. Um, but this will do for now. Um, but in that time, probably 10 days ago, I decided to sit the AZ500 exam. Um, and myself and a co colleague foolishly decided to book it with two and a half weeks to study. Um, and both of us, I think we're both thinking that uh, once we booked it in, it'll be locked in, we'll be focused, and we'll be super motivated. And I can tell you that didn't happen. Um, I was too busy procrastinating, um, didn't really study on the weekends. Um, after work was quite challenging to study to, you know, my mind was just worn out after work. Um, and he was also, you know, focused on his um, holidays. Um, so he was packing and organizing things. And yeah, so anyways, um, we, I think, both successfully passed the exam. We just grazed through, I believe. Um, and that was probably because of our Azure fundamental skills um, and knowledge that we have. Now, that's not really a brag to say we're super smart, um, but I do think that is how we passed. So just to note, this video is not to replace your learning content. This is really just a video about my experience in taking the AZ500 exam. Okay, so before we get started, let's just talk about the Microsoft certification path. So the AZ500, which is the Microsoft Azure Security Technologies exam, will basically get you a badge of Microsoft Certified Azure Security Engineer Associate. And this is part of the certification path to become a Microsoft certified cybersecurity architect expert. Um, so the next exam to do from this one is the SC100 Microsoft Cybersecurity Architect exam, which paired with the Azure Security Engineer Associate makes you a Microsoft certified cybersecurity architect expert. I thought I'd just cover that, but the assumption is if you're looking at the AZ500, um, you're most likely uh, versed in Azure in some aspect and probably done other Microsoft certifications. So I thought I'd give you a quick background on my skill sets first. Um, I've been working with Azure probably for about four and a half years or so, and probably in the last few years has probably more been focused around the DevOps sort of space, I guess, um, on how I work. Um, and I'm probably not deploying infrastructure as much these days, um, but still doing Azure projects as well as um, helping out other squads and customers. Um, like an example on Friday was basically a customer couldn't get their app gateway working. And you know, I know nothing about an app gateway to be honest, um, but I was able to uh, reverse engineer it and understand all the flows. So, um, you know, uh, figure out where Azure Firewall was logging to, um, you know, write the custo queries to figure out that traffic was passing through. Um, also looking at route tables and things to see where traffic was going. Um, also figuring out, I guess, what the errors meant and how the backend pools work um, and how, I guess, it was resolving DNS and looking at NSGs. Um, so just testing the entire network flow. So I get thrown into moments like that, um, which is really good because it sort of, uh, you know, allows me to understand something a lot more uh, in a lot more detail. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've also sat, I can't even remember what the exams are anymore, but um, the Azure Administrator exam, which is I think the 104 exam now, and I sat the Azure Architects um, exam, which is back then, I think it was the 301 and the 300. And that was probably about two and a half years ago or so. Yeah, this is the first exam since then. I was actually, I've been planning to do this exam since then as well. Um, and I thought it was probably time. Okay, so the exam in itself ran for an hour and 50 minutes. Um, I started panicking at the 20 minute mark because I was like, uh, I only got 20 minutes left. I don't know how many questions are left. Um, but I ended up finishing with eight minutes to go. It was a total of 52 questions. Um, there was basically 47 multiple choice questions and it finished with a case study of um, five questions. Um, I've heard of other people getting uh, labs as well. So I didn't get a lab. And I do wish I actually sat the exam, you know, two or three years ago, because I heard it was only 30 questions back then. 
And to top it off, I sat the exam on the 3rd of March um, and they just refreshed the content a month before that, which is February the 2nd. So a lot of the content I use was kind of out of date, but let's walk through this process. So I'll just cover, I guess, um, the skills measured from the Microsoft website. Um, so basically it says managing identity and access is 25 to 30%. Secure networking is 20 to 25%. Some secure compute storage and databases is 20 to 25% and managed security operations is 25 to 30%. Okay, so let's walk through my process in preparing for this exam. So it took me a, probably a week to adjust um, where I realized I needed to, to change my routines um, because I was trying to focus after work or on weekends and weekends I was procrastinating, which was really bad. After work, I was generally mentally fatigued and wasn't in the mood to to study or focus. So what I realized is I need to wake up early um, and I need to probably skip going to the gym. So I was basically waking up at about five or six um, and then normally I wouldn't shower and have coffees and everything so early, but I'd shower and then basically have a coffee. So that way I was super refreshed, like I was ready to start the day. And then I would study for at least two hours or so um, and potentially sit some um, whiz lab exams um, and then after work, I would generally focus and study a little bit more or review my um, WizLab results. So I've gone through my standard process, which is watch the videos from a cloud guru. Um, turns out there's actually two types. Um, one of them is, I think about 20 hours or, or less, I think, and one is like double. And the one I watched was the Linux Academy one, which was actually super short, but I think sitting the other exams in the past helped me with this exam. But next time when I um, do the next exam, I might just do the Microsoft Learn content because I feel like that is gonna be always up to date. And then I go through my standard process of doing WizLab exams. Um, and generally, to be honest, there's generally an overlap of some questions that are actually on the exam. And I probably only had about three of those. Um, the rest was uh, totally off, or maybe even two questions. I really like sitting the WizLab exams, um, but obviously your mindset, like you're not really in game mode, so you're not that focused when you're actually doing them like a real exam. I like to go through my WizLab results um, to basically go through uh, things I got right to make sure that um, my logic on why I think it's right is correct, and if it's not, to understand the difference. And then the failures is obviously um, understand the gaps that I have and then learn more about um, those gaps that I have. I'll just roll through, I guess, um, the things that I think that you should cover. Um, now, obviously this is not a replacement for actual learning content or material. This is just my experience and my thoughts on the exam. So I think what got me through was a lot of the um, Azure basics. So um, Azure, understanding Azure RBAC was, uh, was a big one um, because they phrased the questions differently in my first three or four questions. It would have a mini little scenario there, um, which would involve potential management groups and RBAC and scoping. Um, and then you'll just have three responses at the bottom. And that was user one can do this, true or false. User two can do this or that, true or false. And then it came down to, I guess, you know, where their permissions were scoped and the permissions that they had, such as knowing the difference between um, what an owner can do and what a contributor can do. The other thing was uh, virtual networks and peering. That's obviously always going to be uh, a core thing in these exams. Um, so being across, I guess, um, peering um, and how virtual networks work. There's things around NSGs and ASGs. So network security groups and application security groups, like I haven't touched ASGs for a long time. But you know, doing this exam and the studying, I didn't know that this was a thing, but an example is ASGs um, are limited to VNets. So you can't have an ASG across regions pretty much. Um, so you know, I learned those little things, but they're the type of things that you'll get asked um, in this exam. And on top of that, um, I haven't dealt much with Azure Firewall, but I know basic concepts. Um, so you have to understand um, Azure Firewall as well and the policies. Um, and one of the key things is the subnets, that, you know, the subnet that's required. I think it's actually called the Azure Firewall um, subnet or something like that. But yeah, don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, you need a specific subnet um, to deploy an Azure Firewall. Um, there's a standard thing around um, 
um, VPN configuration. So obviously gateway subnets, routing, BGP, um, and understanding how express routes sort of work, um, as well as um, um, UDRs, so user-defined routes. So knowing where you need to forward traffic if you have like a hub spoke model. Um, a big a big key one was um, monitoring and logging. So, you know, understanding, um, I guess, Custo queries in itself. Um, the other thing was how to get logs, um, understanding diagnostics logging as well. Um, so, you know, you got to understand those fundamentals of logging because it is it is a security exam. So it's about centralize your, centralizing your logging and figuring out how you can create alerts, how you monitor them. One, one big thing that I didn't really know was um, virtual machine disk encryption. So that was uh, covered in the exam as well. Um, as well as key vaults. So how um, encryption integrates with key vault as well as understanding um, how you can manage a key vault. So understanding the management plane and then the data plane. So the, R the Azure RBAC that sits to manage a key vault, but then the access policies inside. Um, there was actually a few questions around that. The other thing was Sentinel. So, you know, I'm not really familiar with Sentinel. Um, didn't really get too many questions. One of the big ones that I um, was not really across was Windows Defender. Um, you know, knowing all the aspects of Windows Defender, like the features, how to configure it, the licensing. Um, one of the common questions I was getting was about just-in-time um, and the requirements around just-in-time, like um, just-in-time requires an NSG or Azure Firewall. So I didn't know that, obviously through my studying, that's what I learned. So when you get these questions, um, if there's no Azure Firewall or no NSG, then you know that you can't roll out um, just-in-time um, access through Windows Defender. Um, but yeah, so that was a um, new thing that I learned. Um, also, the other thing was um, knowing Azure policy um, and also knowing, I guess, um, how you can configure remediation and using like managed identities and things like that. And also knowing the structure, the JSON structure of an Azure policy in itself. So that was another thing. The common one that goes into these is databases. So uh, the database stuff, it was mainly authentication around um, PaaS services like Azure SQL on itself and the authentication types, as well as um, the Azure Active Directory integration that you can do. Um, and then obviously the common one around database encryption. Um, you know, there, there's always gonna be these questions around um, database encryption, how you access it, and you know, using dynamic data masking and things like that. You know, knowing things around securing databases is a common thing um, with these exams. And then there's also, um, things around Azure AD. So Azure AD in itself, um, obviously you've got to know fundamentals of Azure AD um, and the Azure AD roles. So, you know, I'm not really that familiar with all the roles. So I felt like some roles were uh, probably made up, but you got to understand um, how, you know, a user administrator role would work and the permissions that it has. Um, there's also other features like smart features like the identity protection and the licensing requirements around that. So, you know, understanding, I guess, how you can use identity protection, um, identity protection to sort of, um, I guess, protect yourself and alert you around, uh, you know, brute force attacks and things like that. Um, there's also the common one around um, conditional access policies. So I haven't dealt with um I haven't dealt with conditional access policies much, but it's about understanding, I guess, how you can configure on and all the configuration options inside. Um, there's there's also questions around um, MFA. So um, again, there's uh, multiple scenarios on having um, certain conditional access policies that would enforce MFA, but then um, have exemptions on locations. And then it would ask if this user logged in from this with this device, would they be challenged for MFA? And then you get the same question, but a different user, which would obviously be a different location and things like that. So you definitely have to understand um, the MFA side of things, like how to set it up, um, you know, when the status is enabled to enforced, um, how the conditional access policies work and what overrides. Um, so, you know, I learned that um, having an exclude policy overrides everything. Um, so that, you know, just having that mental note was really easy to answer a question I think I had. Um, the exclude just overrides everything. So if, that way you can never lock yourself out. 
So I'm just going through and editing the video. And this is what happens when you don't really roll off scripts and try and wing it. Um, I didn't even mention PIM. So privileged identity management. So you need to understand um, how to configure it, what the use cases are and what the benefits are. So anyways, let's get back to the video. So there was obviously um, questions around using service principles and um, system managed identities. Um, I think they're trying to move away from service principles and go via uh, system managed identity. So you don't have to manage um, the credentials as much as you would a service principle. But they're, they're probably the core things that I um, encountered. You know, the exam was quite <coughs> a lengthy exam. Um, and like I said, I just barely passed. Um, but I do think sitting previous exams, even though they were two and a half years ago, and my experience in Azure was really what got me um, over the line. So I thought I'd just close out with some tips in passing the exam. Um, I would definitely recommend that you have at least a year's experience in Azure. Um, sitting the other exams definitely help. So um, even though I sat the Azure Administrator and the Azure Architect exam like two and a half years ago, um, I think it still definitely helped because it broadens your knowledge around certain topics that you may not use day to day. Um, and so when I went through the content, it sort of refreshed my mind. So definitely having experience will help. Um, you know, sitting exams from a theoretical basis where you haven't really used the technology, just um, I feel like, you know, you don't get a grasp on how it really works. Um, the other thing is um, make sure your content is up to date. Um, I will next time use the MS um, Learn content, um, even though it's more reading as opposed to videos and things like that. Um, it's probably a better way to make sure that your content is up to date. Now, with the actual questions in itself, um, like I say in my previous videos, you just got to back yourself. So, you know, um, just lock in an answer with go with your gut and just lock it in because if you procrastinate and waste time, you may run out of time. So I never really go back and review my responses. I just lock them in and it is what it is. Uh, I don't like stewing over them. I don't like marking questions um, for review to go back on because, you know, by the time I'm at the end of the exam, I'm like fried, my brain is fried. A lot of the questions, they kind of try to bamboozle you. So you've got to read the questions very carefully. And um, sometimes when you have a little scenario based question, I would like to read the question first, like because sometimes they throw things in, like I had a question around um, opening up ports for RDP for you know a server, but then randomly it just throws in that it's also running a web service on port 80, which, ha which has no relevance, right? So it's just to sort of throw you off. And like I said, read the question properly as well, because changing one, one part of the question, like one word, can change the outcome or the response. So just be mindful of that as well. Um, and like I said, I had some questions that had zero as an option. Um, and the drop down was, you know, choose um, how many items you'd need to deploy for this to work. And it had zero to four, but it had two responses. And one of them I actually chose as zero and the other one I chose as one. Cause it, the keywords in the exams are minimum means minimum. So don't go for the flashy, go for the one that just meets the requirements. So keyword is minimum. And you know, that's probably all I really have for the exam is um, to make sure that you're prepared and mentally prepared. So sitting test exams definitely help mentally prepare you and get you in that mindset. Um, but yeah, so that's really all I have. So if you've sat the exam, um, share your experience below and some tips um, for anyone else wanting to sit the exam. You also might want to put the date you sat the exam um, because the content has changed. So stay tuned. Um, I'm probably going to do the SC100 exam, which is a security architect exam. Um, or the AZ400 um, that's been on the cards for a couple of years now, but I'll probably do both by the end of the year, um, probably in the next few months. Um, I'm also trying to uh, create more content regularly, so I thought I'd ease myself back in. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, hit the little bell notification because my upload schedule is pretty erratic. And stay tuned for the next video. Catch you later. See ya.